He is an eight-year-old living legend from Kilfenora who enjoys Elvis and Johnny Cash bartering at horse fairs, playing with his 22 dogs and checking his wobbly tooth. For one night only, it's the return of the man who knows the meaning of life before he's even lived it. Would you please give a big Late Late Show welcome back to Shimmy! <laughs> Welcome back. Good to see you. That was a good, strong handshake there. Sure, a good, squeeze of handshake is a sign of a good man. It is the sign of a good man. You're a bad judge of character, Shimmy, that's for sure, I can tell you. Uh, so, the last time we met was on the Toy Show. How has life changed since then, Shimmy? Uh, changed a bit. What type of question is that? So, I'm still going to school, I'm still getting homework, my mummy's still giving out to me. <laughs> So life hasn't changed at all? Not a bit. No? No. You're still tearing away? Yeah. I believe you were, you were in hospital recently, I heard? Um, yeah, just two weeks ago. And what were you in for? Uh, ha oh, ha. I should to get the old appendix out. <laughs> Awful job. Awful job. And, and how, did they, how did they do that? Did they, did they give you an anaesthetic or did they just...? Now, Patrick, I have a bit of a story here for you. <laughs> So, the consultant, I heard him saying that we might have to go out his tooth now in case he swallows it when he's asleep. So and this so, was before the appendix, they wanted to make sure that the, that the tooth was okay? Yeah, yeah. That, this was be, before they gave me an injection. And now Patrick, you see, he, I heard him saying that he might have to go out my tooth. And I said, if you take out my tooth, save 50 quid under my pillow. And you know what? <laughs> Patrick, I thought nurses and doctors were rich. <laughs> Turns out, I woke up when, when my appendix was out. I had a tooth in my head, but not 50 quid. No 50 quid? And now, Patrick... He'll get no luck from that, Jimmy. No. No luck. And Patrick, now, I can tell you this. He mustn't be going to horse fairs and that because I, I spat in my hand and he spat in his hand and we shook it. And when a, and when a man, when, when you shake on a deal, it's a deal. Yeah. Yep. And see what you mean. <laughs> and did the doctors, did they give you any advice whenever you were in there? Well, Patrick, the nurse came into my room and she said, no, you can't be lifting anything heavy. And I said, well, can I lift a chicken? Because I've an awful heavy chicken out home. <laughs> and you see, uh, since last I, was, uh, I saw you last, mm. I started my own egg business. I sell eggs below my granny's garden centre. Three euro box. Shimmy <laughs> <laughs> eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Same as free range eggs. And, uh, <laughs> and what's the chicken count at the minute? How many have you got? Um, well, they usually lay 10 or, 10 or something a day, you see, they're not all laying, yes. Right. But how many chickens do you have? We have 20 hens and one rooster. There you are now. And have you any plans for St. Patrick's Day with the chickens? Well, Patrick, before I say anything else, I say my St. Patrick's Day would be different from yours. <laughs> you see, when I get home, I'd be flat out. I... <laughs> I'll be brushing my pony's mane. I'll be, I'll be polishing her hoofs, and then I have to paint my carriage. You see, the I go to my parade there. I've been doing it for nearly four years now, and you see, I I haven't won yet, but I might win now this year, hopefully. But it's not all about the winning, Patrick. No. <laughs> But to taking part, yeah, and then winning, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I understand. I understand. Uh, now, the last time we were talking, you just taken up the, the concertina. concertina. Yeah, uh, you, you, you've got it here. That you were inspired by your great grandfather, isn't that right? My great grandfather, yeah, he, his name's Dick O'Halloran. I'm wearing his cap here, and you see, he was playing the and blowing the cliffs of Moher, and he had his own spot, 
And I was thinking to myself, away there, wouldn't it be handy, you know, for a job, just not for a job, like, you know, for a bit of uh, um, pocket money. <laughs> to go up to the cliffs of Moher and you see they had their own spot and my great granny she plays a concertina. I, I went in to swap it in this place, blown clear now, yeah. um, a breakfast place and I was eating my fry and people saw the concertina and they said, do you play the concertina? And I said, yeah, would you play us an old tune there? So after I finished my breakfast, Sure didn't I play the written bog and well, sure. Well, she shows how you, how you do it there. So, so look, we've we'll, we'll walked back in here. You've just had your breakfast and I said, do you play the concertina and you say you do? Yeah. Will you give us an old tune there? I will. Great. <clears throat> here we go. Well, uh, you, hold on. Yeah. You're like, consult now, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on now. I've got no cash on me, but I have something else for you because I know you borrowed that. That's, that's not your concertina, but mm. our friends at Walton Music, uh, we thought that you might like this. This is your own brand new. And I tell you what, if you can get this for 50 quid, you can go back and see the consultant. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, 